Mm. Mm. It is nothing as good as a great <laughs> hamburger. Yes, we're doing everything from hamburgers to Chateaubriand today. We are cooking beef. Mm. So good. We're going to do pan fried steaks, and Jack has a great panoply of them and is going to tell you all about them. Yes. Well, you're going to do some steak dine with that beautiful um, ribeye steak, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And look at that one. I mean, this is nice that, marbling, yeah? Now, this is the one example of prime meat uh -huh. that we have. Only 2% of our beef now is prime, and most of it is not very well aged. But this one is great and it's terribly expensive. What is it about? Oof. 10 or $12 a pound yes, or more. Yes, about like this, yes. But it's worth it to have one meal with a perfect steak. And th all of those are kind of bistro steak, you know, which have become fashionable in the last few years. We have the classic flank steak. That flank steak now costs us all fortune, right? It, it used does. to be cheap, and yes. now it's very expensive. So, and the fourth one that I have here is actually the top blade. I mean, in New York, this is called the chicken steak. In Boston, it's the top blade steak. In San Francisco, it's the flat iron steak. So they have different type of name. It it's part of the chuck, yes, it's part on of the top shoulder. Of your shoulder. Right. No. And it's quite good too. And it's available basically under one name or another all over. So there is a large nerve in the center. What I'm going to do is to cut this on top of that large sinew that there is in the well, center. I don't yes. know. You see that sinew here? Yes. So I can cut one from the other side here. It's the best way you can feel of that with your it. knife, I yes. guess. Yes. So this has pan fry steak, very simply done with garlic and uh, a little bit. I can use garlic today. Well, certainly okay, with the steak. Okay. Yeah. And here. That's so beautiful. What I like to do for the steak au pois, the paper steak, to cut it double like this, to clean it out. I mean, here we have an expensive piece of meat, so we have to take care of it and to cut it in half, you know? I like to cut it like a kind of a tournado like this, you know? Mm -hmm. Cut this way. So I'll have two steak au poire. Now your steak is going to be... The ribeye steak, you know, the roast ribs of beef. And this is the steak that comes in between the ribs. Uh-huh. So we're gonna trim that off. But this one is nice. Put it a piece of plastic on each mm -hmm. side. So which type of... Uh, torture instrument we're going to use to pump this. It has to be counted yes. down to a quarter of an inch. You, you show that. That wake yes. up the neighbors, you know. Yes. You have to go where the, you have like a, a two by four underneath, you know. No. This is yours, it's beautiful. You know, this is an old one. I remember using yes. that many, many years ago. Because this, you can use it to cut Shop, you know, mm -hmm. uh, pork shop, and and break the bone also. So this is. is that thin that's enough? About a thing? quarter of an inch. I think that's about right. I'm going to flavor it with a little bit of soy and a little bit of oil, and this can be done ahead. Okay, are you going to cook your pepper steak? I'm going to start mine, but uh, right. I'm just heating up my pan because I want to see what you're doing. I'm writing the recipe down, bit. you know. Okay. Soy on each of these. That's good. You want a bit of oil on the other side too? Yes, let's put a little. Okay. That's nice. I'm just gonna put a little 
clarified butter in there. And this you can do at the table if you like showing off. And then you need just about two minutes on each side. Yeah, this is pretty thin, so it could catch. And so while this is doing, you'll be sort of getting ready your sauce. I have some nice stock over there. Yep. And we have nice. wet mustard. We have some mustard right here. Oh, mustard right there. Yeah. This is hardly going to color. Now, these are done enough for now. So this is the first stage, take them off. Then I'm going to make the sauce. All right. Need some Put shallots. In. You want some shallots? Yeah. Good. What else so you I'll need? Put a little bit more butter in there, and then we want to mix the mustard with some of the stock there, that Dijon-type mustard. Mix it, it up, and then we can add more if needed. All right. You would have all of these things on a beautiful silver salver right next to you. You know, it used to be very popular. I mean, the steak diane, you know? And I haven't seen in restaurants for so many years. I think we could put a little more stock in, Jack. Yeah, a bit more stock. The steaks get dipped into this. Mmm, smells good. It's supposed to be nice and rare. Well, it is rare. You can see the, yeah. the liquid of the steak here. Okay. So just to be you want that back in there? Let's put it back in. Okay. Now, these are really ready to serve. They're so ready to serve. We have a nice plate over there. I'll just serve one of them. Now, that could really serve two people. Can I give you your garnish? I'm just gonna, yes, give me my garnish. I'll put a little parsley on there. You have a nice garnish of uh, potato mm -hmm. here. Mm. With that three potato, should be enough, right? I don't think that's plenty. You can put a little more sauce on it. That sauce looks delicious, doesn't it? Mm. Well, that's okay. all there is to that. You can add what you want. This is not a recipe written in stone. Now we're going to do the pepper steak or the steak au poivre. Right. And here I have four different types of paper. Conventionally, we use the black pepper corn. I have all spice or Jamaican paper, it's called. This is Szechuan peppercorn, and this is the green peppercorn, but you don't really have to use all of this. See, what I do there with the bottom of that small skillet is to rub it on top of it to crack all of the kernel. That's, that's it. When it doesn't make any more noise, you know it's all cracked. So we spread it out. Julia, you want to put some okay. salt and pepper on it and dip them in there. And I put a dash of oil on this one. Can I use a little bit of your clarified butter? Yeah. That's good. The steaks are covered basically on each side with the pepper corn. Of course, you can put as much paper as you want, but conventionally, it is basically kind of covered on each side. So here we are. And I'm going to use those large country top blade steak. Again, the same idea, salt and pepper. This is nice and tender. I love those mm -hmm. steaks. They have a lot of taste. That's in what there. we want is lots of flavor. Flavor, yes. So a little bit of oil and your clarified butter. Ooh, that's this is hot. A lot of what we've lost nowadays is the good, rich flavor of well marbled, well aged beef. And you're struggling with the thing is eat something good, but eat a small amount of it. And I'm a shameless doggy bag taker in a restaurant. Yes. Because if they're a great big steak, then I'll take the rest of it home. So you want to brown that nicely on each side, and again, cook it to the extent at which you like it. I'm going to start like the mushrooms for That's that. a good idea, yes. We have a lot of interesting mushrooms here. We have those yellow foot chanterelle, you know, that I find in the wood in summer. Now, this is This right. is the oyster mushroom. This is an edge hog, champignon, aiguillon, a, a needle mushroom underneath, and those are the shiitake. Okay, on the country steak there, or bistro steak, we're going to put garlic and parsley in what we call a persillade. Crush the garlic. I'm just going to show you a collection of these mushrooms. 
Presumably they will be happy together in one pan. Okay. And the mixture of parsley and garlic we call persil in French and I persillade. The persillade, that mixture is really the the signature of home cooking, you know. My mother cooked at home, she put persillade on top of a steak, on top of a piece of fish, on top of zucchini, on top of tomato. My mushrooms are done, I'm gonna put you know, some little bit of pork or Madeira would be nice. It gives them a lovely flavor. Well, the country steak here are basically finished. I'm taking them out this way. That looks lovely. And in there, we're putting the persillade there. And you know, here, all I put is a little bit of water. That's the thing, that's it. And I just like to drip the, for the dripping, you know, out of this. And of course, that type of steak works so well with the French fried potato, you know, which we just fry here. So that would be the real well, that bistro nice. type of thing, you know? Well, I could eat that. Okay. And I'm going to finish the steak au poivre. You have a little bit of shallot for me, Les. Here's some. Oh, great, that's terrific. I put some chopped shallot in the dripping. And now, a little bit of uh, pyrotechnic cooking. Yes. Okay. A little bit of flambe, your cognac. Don't put your head on top of it when you do that. Put it and move it on the side. That's great. Actually, Jack, I'll tell us for us home cooks, it's very dangerous to pour from the bottle because the flame can come right into the bottle, explode, and it will blind you. So wow. Think, no, it will. So I think you should always pour from a, from a label. Okay. So put a little bit of veal stock that we have done there, and maybe we finish that with butter. Just a little bit, actually. Yes. You can square it around. OK, we put it on the steak au poivre. And I think we can garnish it with the beautiful mushroom. Here, you deglaze that, you said, with a little bit of port wine, right? Mm-hmm. We put it there. Well, that give us a little tiny sweetness. A bit of parsley on top of this. And this is our watercress. That's good. Well, that's very nice. Now we're going to do hamburgers and tenderloin of beef, from the cheapest to the most expensive. Right. Jack has a whole tenderloin here. Beautiful tenderloin, yes. Usually, when we divide it, we cut the whole head like this for what we are going to do, which is a big chateau boyant. This will usually be cut into what we call the heart of filet, or tourne d'eau, you know, or, or cœur de filet. As it get a bit smaller, you do smaller one, the petit filet mignon, you Those know, sauté. Yes. And finally, usually with the tail, you do a beef stroganoff, you know, sauté. Mm -hmm. So it's usually the classic way of dividing it. Usually, the Chateaubriand here, you want to put it around like this to hold it a little bit, and we pound it you know, to give now, it. If you don't have one of those fancy pounders, you could use a big frying pan and pound it with that. Exactly, yeah, that would be the same thing, but. This Good. is very useful, the secret. I had always thought that the Chateaubriand was more for the heart of the tenderloin, but that would but never you, give you this big piece. Yeah, usually the head, you know? So I'm go mm -hmm. just going to put salt and pepper on it. Maybe a little bit, tiny bit of oil here. Olive oil or regular oil. And then we'll start it to grill it, you know? That's it. But I'm this is it. the classic Chateaubriand. They this had pounded. The, the classic Chateaubriand. Good. Good. Now we're going to do the classic Hamburger hamburger. <laughs> yeah. Now, we have bought a display of hamburgers depending on their fat content. This is amazing that you can get that in the market. Actually, I hadn't seen it in the market like this one uh, we have here. Well, you're you know, behind with all... in New York. Yeah, we are behind, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you think should be the right 
proportion of fat in the I hamburger? I think it depends on how you feel about things. Because uh -huh. the hamburger, we don't we cook rather rare, don't we? So a lot of the fat isn't going to melt out. They tell you now not to cook it rare, so. What do you think about I that? I don't pay attention to that. Oh, good. I would like about 15. I'll take the 85. 85, 15% fat. Yes. Yeah, I would agree to that. I would say between 15 and 20%. It's a nice color. Anyway, one pound of meat you have here. Well, you really shouldn't eat that much. You should eat about four or five ounces. Five ounces would be three hamburger in there. All right, you divide it up into one third. OK, about like this, no? Yeah. When I cook meat, I always put salt and pepper on a steak or on anything. Some people don't, on a roast, but I always do. Except for the hamburger. I like the hamburger, I like more it. American I like style. Flavored. Just started this way, the salt after. So mine would be this well, I'm going to put salt in, and I'll, I'll even use some black pepper. And, and ground black pepper. In and I'm also, I have a little bit of shallot that's been sauteed. We'll put that See, in. we used to do that in France. And then some people say that you have to form it very, very loosely. How do you feel about that, Jack? Yes, I agree that you should not pound it too much, you know? And that's one of the points, too. If your hamburger is really very, very lean, the problem, of course, is that it crumbles and falls apart. And you're going to cook it on the grill. I'm going to cook this in a, in a nice old that's a beautiful iron friendly. Black iron skillet. Yeah, well, I've had that for years. The black iron skillet will retain a lot of heat. Yes. Now, look at the Chateaubriand. What you want to do is to mark it on each side and then finish it up in the oven. What happens is that as the meat cook, it kind of uh, shrivel on the outside and the myoglobin, the muscle tissue, get pushed toward the center of the meat. So at that point, if I were to open that meat, you would see that about half inch all around is gray, like overcooked, and all the center would be not even lukewarm, raw, bloody. So what you do, you let it rest on a low oven, it continues cooking, and it's nice and pink throughout. So the resting of the meat is very important. Mm -hmm. Always. I think it's about enough. Now it's very rare, of course. We are smoking the kitchen here. So yeah. here it is. Yeah. I put it this way or that way, and I'm going to put that in like a 300 degree oven to let it rest to 275, mm -hmm. about 15, 20 minutes, you know? Now for the hamburgers. And if I put a little salt, in the bottom of the pan, I won't have to put any fat in. I've spread mine out quite a bit, so it won't take too long to cook. And I put a little bit of oil on mine because mm -hmm. not putting, and I don't like it flat, I like it yeah. this way. And yours is just plain. Yes, mm -hmm. and especially a very important part of the hamburger, don't press it. People press it and get all the juice out of it. They often do that in restaurants because people are in a hurry. They see that it's not cooked and they press it. Get the juice out of it, but then you have a dry hamburger. So let it cook. How long will you take? It will take about two minutes on each side, on I think. Side. Yes, mine at least has lunch, too. Well, I think mine is ready to be flipped well, oh, very nice. nicely. You see, without pressing it or anything, I can see that it's very juicy, just the way I like it. Turn it over. That looks nice. Yes. And that cooks another minute on this side, right? Mm -hmm. During that time, shall we prepare the bun? Are you going to toast our buns? Mine, I like the Kaiser roll. I'd like some a little toasted on your grill, Jack. Yes, I like mine brown a little bit on the grill. I think mine's done, so I'm going to hold it up until my bun is ready. Oh, well, I'll give you that bun, then. You want to put some cheese on yours, huh? Well, why not? Might as well put everything on. OK. All right. Thank you. my bun do, ready? Do you, 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 yeah, your bun, I think, is that OK? Well, that looks lovely. OK, so I'm here it is. I'm going to put a little butter on mine. You know, the best way to do hamburger, you go to the neighbor, to do it in the neighbor so you can mess up the kitchen. If I do that at home, my wife will let, never let me in the kitchen again. Well, I'm going to take some onion. So you oh. have red onion. Lots of red onion. I'll put the ketchup on. Do, you want, do we want lettuce on it, too? Well, I'm putting lettuce on mine. I have iceberg. Would you like some? Sure. I think that's the only kind you can use. Put the hamburger on it like oh, that. That looks good. I'll put a little mayo. I'll put a little bit of that on top. I like everything on my hamburger. That sounds good. 
No, what else do you think I should have? I a little pepper? Well, you have to... I'll even use black pepper. Black I? pepper this time, good. I'll put a little more ketchup on here. Did you say you wanted a little piece of bacon? Sure. Here, I put some to warm up a little oh, bit. Oh, good. One piece? I'll have two pieces. Two I'll piece. Love, love bacon. Okay, this is a nice uh, lean bacon. Oh, mm, that's beautiful. Well, this mine is, a is yum, ready. This is a yummy hamburger here. Here we are. Like All right. So here I have mine. Mm -hmm. I brown it on each side. I have a lot of lettuce. That makes it healthy. I like tomato. Mm-hmm. Well, too slice. I forgot tomato. Oh, it's too bad I have a lot of ketchup. You have a lot of other things. And red onion, classic way. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Then I put a bit of pickle. I don't, do you like pickle in there? I'll have pickle on the side, I think. On the side, yeah. You Which is good, too. That's good. OK. No. Always eat a piece of pickle when you do it. I think I'll, I'll keep mine at this. And I like to put the ketchup here with even a little more lettuce. I didn't and again, put a tomato in mine. I press it. Just put a tomato oh, in the, there. This is the top. Press it One like thing this. It's like when you get it so high, it's hard really to chew it. It's true, you know. It's so big. You have bigger high than uh, than mouth, you know, most of the time. So I like to cut mine in half, you know, so I can at least grab a piece well, that like this. Pretty. You might cut mine in half too. That's, okay. a, that's a good idea. Looks beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that nice? And now the best part of it. Is the eating? Eat it, yes. Okay. Oh. Very That's good, huh? good. That's great. Mm. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Real American fare. Here comes the Chateaubriand. Here comes the Chateaubriand. The moment of beauty. We have a whole array of uh, tiny vegetables with it. You certainly do there. And you can see the That's juice come out of it, which indicate that it rested mm -hmm. well enough, so that should be fine. And of course, you can carve it and this in the dining serve, room. This would serve six people, wouldn't it? Yeah, at least, at least four, I would say. No. Yeah. It would be nice to carve it in the dining room. I love that. Yes. And we have a little bit of Béarnais yes. sauce, the classic one. That's perfect. It's just right, isn't it? Yes, it because it's nice it, and it, rare. It, it rested long mm -hmm. enough, that you know. So it rested long enough. You have all that juice smells coming out. Lovely. Yes, and it, it's nice, as, as you said, to do it a little bit in the dining room sometimes. Oh, so, I think. But probably serve about one, two, three, four, five. Yes, about two slices, two mm. to three slices per person. But I think we had a great menu today. I think we did too. And we enjoy cooking it for you. Say bon appétit. And happy cooking. And happy cooking with you, Jacques. Presentation of KQED San Francisco.